Welcome back everybody for my 51st update video. In this video, I go back to 10 past product reviews and look back at them in order and let you know which ones I continue to use after my review is over and which ones ended up in the boneyard. The reviews covered in this video are numbers 501 through 510 covering June through August of 2023. Now, some of these products I continue to use and some didn't. So let's see which ones made the cut in today's update. Let's start with number 501, which was a collection of egg poachers, which is a very niche product. But did they work? Let's see how my test went. This is the Eggland Egg Poacher by Ototo. I paid about 12 bucks. Here we go. Now, according to these instructions, you put it in there, cover it, turn the heat off, and let it set for 10 minutes. All right, here we go. Let's see how's it look. It, maybe it's done. Let's see. All right, it's a little more set than maybe I would have liked, but it certainly has a poached uh, feel to it. Some people like that, that texture. Next up, this is the Scoo Egg Poaching Cup. It came in a four pack. So they say to spray the nonstick cooking spray into the cup and then crack an egg in there. The lids are only for the microwave though. So we'll put that there. That, I think that's all we are supposed to do. Egg in the microwave and we're off. We shall see. Oh, that's bad. That is not good. Look at that. I'm already seeing egg just, oh! <laughs> Wow, that is a no-go on that one. Whoa, well, that's a disaster, not good. And we're off. All right, we're at the five minute mark. Let's take the pink one out and see how that looks. Oh, the handle is, it's pretty hot. All right, here we go, five minutes, see what we got. There's the five minute poached egg. Let's uh, cut it open. I think five minutes is not enough. Here we go, eight minutes, dump it right out. Now that looks, that looks more like it, I think. There's the two contestants, five minutes on the right, eight minutes on the left. That seems uh, much better to me. This is the microwave egg cooker and poacher. I paid about 30 bucks for this one. Now the first step is to preheat it for two to three minutes. Now they say to lightly oil it. That's what we got, and let's cover it up, put it in the microwave. Here we go. Let's see if I can get these out of there and see what we got. It seems like the spoon is the way to go to get this out of here. It's good, it's certainly uh, edible, but I don't, is it poached? I'm not sure. It's funny, as many egg gadgets as I've tested over the years, I rarely end up using them because it's not really much better than the cookware I already have. And they take up space. So while these were fun to test out, I didn't find any of them useful long-term. Number 502 was kind of an interesting looking multi-slicer I saw going around online. Let's see how my test went. Here's the unit itself. It looks like a regular mandolin slicer, but it comes with attachments that can be removed. So you have multiple attachments here. It's really a slicer with, with four attachments. It also has a brush and a glove. I guess I'll, I'll put their glove on. Maybe make this official here. <laughs> uh, that feels kind of awkward. Oh, I'm kind of feeling the red cabbage, honestly. That's actually pretty good. Now on the carrot, they were only going one way. So they're just like this, just across the blind. This just feels very unsafe. I've only got a couple of things I think will work on the thick slice. So let's try the potato now. This feels more solid. This feels better. I've had slicers like this before and I would say it's kind of on par with those. They're still not particularly thick. I mean, I would think in some realms, this would be considered a thin slice. Oh yeah, it's, it's working. So we, I'm not sure what the end result is yet, but let's see. It, it take, definitely takes some force. And we're going to attach the grater now. That's a very fine grater. And I feel like I'm making a mess here too. That's almost too grated. All right, so it, it glides across it pretty easily. Let's see what we got on the other side. That's pretty fine, but not, not terrible, really. Now, pushing it across there, it, it takes a little bit of work. I wouldn't say anything more difficult than regular graters. We'll put the julienne blade on there now. So let's try that for a carrot and see how that goes. All right, well, I'm getting some, I'm getting some cuts here. I'm getting some. 
It seems kind of slow. Like I feel like I should be further along in this carrot than I am. I'm not sure what the official definition of a Julian cut is, but this seems like it's too small for me. Maybe not, but it, it does seem pretty fine. So this is one of those products that even during my test didn't really work that well. So I really didn't have much of a reason to keep using it. I also haven't had really anybody ask me about it. It's funny, I saw these going around quite a bit last year and I've barely seen them since then. That's kind of a telling sign that these really didn't work that well. Number 503 was a collection of soda gadgets. A couple of these went viral and I had requests for them. Some kind of worked better than others. So let's see how my original review went. First up, this is a soda dispenser. I have not even opened it up yet. All right, so I guess what I'm supposed to do is just twist it on the top. That seems pretty, pretty tight. Oh, it's leaking out. Oh, well, you know, it's working. It's a bit foamy, but it is working. But this is so slow, you can actually put the handle up automatically and just wait for it. It's very slow. Next up is soda dispenser number two. This is what it's supposed to look like. Let's open it up. So we have a gasket to put there, a gasket to put in here. All right, so the spout goes on here. Put this on top. Now we're supposed to flip it over. Let's see what we got. All right, well, so far, so good. Now I've got to poke a pinhole in this one as well. Uh, not terrible. It's working. Number three is going to be this FizzKeeper can pump. You just place it over your can, pump it a few times, it repressurizes it and keeps your soda from going flat. All right, two clicks. Let me see, if, does it leak? It's not leaking. They say to press the pump three to four times. That's what I'll do. One, two, three, four. All right, these are going to the fridge. I'll come back tomorrow and see how they turned out. Let's see how the can pump worked. Okay, it's not leaking. That's a good sign. Oh, wow. Now that didn't happen the first time. And it does seem to have more foam than the first time. So as I suspected, based on some of the Amazon comments, some people were saying there were duds among the batches. It seems like my first one lost a seal overnight. My second one didn't. I only got it for a couple bucks. It was on clearance. It's called the grab and pour. I don't see any information on this. It seems like it just no longer exists. The way this one's supposed to work is you have your two liter bottle of soda here and it just fits over the top here. And then there's a kind of a gap. So when you squeeze it together, it's going to hold the soda bottle. Well, you know, actually it, it does provide a pretty good grip. All right, so I left the grab and pour and I left the fizz keepers out. The other ones I kind of put away. And I didn't really find much use for any of them. I probably used the grab and pour the most, but eventually I just felt like it was more in the way than anything. So I put all of them away in the boneyard and I have not seen them since. Number 504 was a shaved ice maker, a popular model on Amazon. I thought it worked pretty well. Here's how my original review went. Here are the five pieces. Now I've paid 50 bucks for this. I also have a couple flavors here. Now these flavors I bought individually for 10 bucks a piece. So according to the instructions, the next thing you're supposed to do is take the ice out of the mold, which goes out nicely. They say if it's dome, to put the dome side down, I guess that's more of the dome than this side. So we just place it in here. All right, so we put the motor on there. Now we're gonna be, hold the button down and press at the same time. Now I have a glass bowl here, which will allow you to see it a little better than a regular cup would be. Oh, wow. Wow, that is loud. That, I did not expect the loudness, but that's, that's nice looking. Mm, mm hmm mm-hmm. Oh, that is pretty good. I'm just curious what happens if I put some regular ice cubes in there. They say it's not going to turn out as well. Let's see. I've got some just regular ice cubes out of my fridge here. Let's see what happens. I guess I'll just use this container to collect and see what we get. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Let's see. It's pretty snowy to me, pretty fluffy. I mean, it really looks pretty good. That's more like a snow cone that has crushed ice. It's not as, not as fluffy as, as when you use the ice block. So I get it. Ice block is better, but you can use ice cubes in a pinch. But as far as I'm concerned, this makes a pretty good version of a homemade shaved ice. So I think it works. Now shaved ice is not something that I really consume regularly, maybe a couple times a year. I probably use this unit maybe twice after my review is over, but eventually the summer ended, I put it away and I haven't seen it since. It certainly does what it's supposed to do and works well at that, but it's not something I continue to use. Number 505 was a collection of three kitchen gadgets. Let's first flash back to the original review and see how that went. First up, this is the flower power. 
Now the claims for this one is they say that it's the ultimate steam releaser. As steam is released, the flower will spin. I see some steam coming next to the flower, but it's not spinning. I wonder if I have to try to reposition it so it'll actually spin. Hmm. Maybe there isn't enough steam. I don't know. I see some steam coming out, but it's not spinning. Come on, spin. Is it going to work? Is it going to work to stop it from overflowing? Let's see. I don't think it is. It's not going to work. Oh, man. When I lift it up, it spins, but when I, when I put it back down, it doesn't. Now, the flower power works well as a steam releaser, although the flower part is a bit touchy and I wish it spun more often. Next up is the Zip Quicker. Sorry for the Ziploc bag. Now, the way you're supposed to do this is you're supposed to just put it over one side and then this bends. So you just pull it towards yourself, put it over the other side and it's, it's ready to go. That's... All right, very nice, very nice. All right, we'll add some chicken breast here. No extra hands. Let's see what we got here. And as far as the zip quicker goes, I have nothing bad to say about this except for maybe the cost. I think 26 bucks is a bit steep for what you get. But on the other hand, it's probably my favorite of the bunch and it's gonna find a place in my kitchen. I think that it really works quite well. And finally, this is the pan buddy. This attaches to pans. Not only does it add a more ergonomic handle, but also supports your wrist. All right, so to use the pan buddy, all you have to do is stick it over the potter pan and then tighten this. And then it provides a grip. So it just slides on here like this. And then we turn it a few times. And now we can pick it up just like this. It feels pretty solid though. I do think this would be beneficial to people that have strength issues or arthritis. Anybody that's had a hard time holding a heavy pan like this would probably find this to be a little bit easier. Now I've tested hundreds of kitchen gadgets over the years and it really has to be kind of special for it to end up in my regular rotation. So the only one of these three I've used with any regularity is the Zip Quicker, which ever since everybody moved out and I'm living here alone, I've actually come, kind of come in handy once in a while. It's not something I've used a lot, but once in a while I reach for it. The other two products were fun to test, but I did not keep using them. Number 506 was this, supposedly a set of smart cutting boards. I'm not sure how smart they really were, but let's take a look at my original review. This is a smart cutting board and knife set. It has multiple cutting boards for different kinds of foods and matching knives. It also has a drying and sanitation feature. So not only are we looking at the cutting board to see how it holds up, but we're also looking at the knife as well. All right, well, the knife seems pretty sharp. The cutting board seems like it's sell up so far. I like the knife. The knife is very sharp. The cutting board seems fine. Let me see. Did I get scratch marks? Maybe a little. Oh, I did get some scratch marks. I'm not sure that's an issue for you, but it, it is there. Next up, I'm going to do this board, which is supposed to be for cooked food and bread. Now, one minor issue is that this bread doesn't even fit on the cutting board. It's going to try cutting it right in half. I mean, it's very sharp. The problem is that the, without the serrated uh, edges, it doesn't start as easily, but it does. Once it gets started, it cuts very nicely. Let's move on to the meat cutting board and accompanying knife. I think this is more designed for raw meats. Certainly there, you know, there are certainly better knives out there, but it gets the job done. It seems pretty sharp. And finally, we've got the fish cutting board and the corresponding knife. All right, now here's one problem with the size. I mean, you can see the salmon's hanging over both sides and it is sharp enough to cut through there. That's good. Really only about two passes to make it all the way through. So it's pretty good. All right, so I try to leave a little bit of moisture here and there just to see what happens. And the knives are even wetter than that. So that's also on purpose. Now to activate the UV, you press this twice. One, two. Blue means UV. So let's take a look inside and see what we got. I look at inside there. I see one UV light on that side. Oh, I see one on that side as well. They're very dim. I'm not sure how effective that would be as dim as they are. All right, so taking a look, it looks like everything dried. So everything is dry in here. I'm just taking a look. There might be a couple of water spots in the, here and there, but I do think that it is drier than when I put it in there. Now forgetting the fact that there's really nothing smart about this and the drying feature didn't work at all. As cutting boards, I actually quite like them. I've never used the drying feature because it didn't work in the first place. But I find the knives and the cutting boards all be pretty good. The green board is, seems to be the one I reach for the most, I guess just because it's the back of the unit. And it really is held up pretty well. There's only a few scratch marks here and there. I have no real complaints about it. The knife also is looking pretty good still. What's disappointing to me though is that I see a lot of these on Amazon between 80 and 120 bucks, way overpriced. I probably wouldn't have paid that if I didn't review this. I mean, since I have it, I continue to use it and I enjoy it. I just don't know why it's so expensive. They should just make this a nice color-coded cutting board set, drop the price in half, and then call it good. Number 507 
was a collection of sunburst lights. I bought two different sets of them, one from Timu, one from Amazon. They're kind of interesting lights that look like fireworks. Let's see how my original review went. Here are four one packs from Timu. Two of these are 240 lights and two of them are 150. Both the Timu and Amazon are solar powered. Both of them have eight modes. Both of them are IP65 waterproof. The Amazon supposedly lasts eight to 12 hours. The Timu supposedly lasts eight to 10 hours. It'll depend on how long they charge in the sun and the sun's intensity. As you can see, they have the lights on the top. They each have a solar panel. They each have two buttons on the back, one for power, one for the mode selection. They also come in three parts. There's this top part with the lights in the panel, the extension rod that goes in there, and then they have a sharpened tip for mounting in the ground more easily. So I'm gonna put an Amazon and a Timu kind of in different places in the yard, groups of two. I'm two here, two there, two there, two there. All right, it is facing south. We're ready to go. Bailey, what's going on in the yard here? What, do you, what is this stuff? All right, the sun's going down. Let's take a look at these. Now, the left is uh, Amazon, the right is Timu, much larger. Let's take a look at the next batch here now. Once again, Amazon left, Timu right. This one came out pretty good. The Amazon's looking a little bit, look a little bit ragged. Now before that sun completely sets, I want to move these. I want to make kind of a cool pattern out of these. I want to see how it looks when they're all together. All right, there we go. They're all together. It looks pretty cool. The four corners are the Timu, and the ones in the center are the Amazons. I think they all look pretty good, honestly. I think it looks really good, better than I thought it was going to. Very festive, this, this looks good in almost any holiday. These kind of 4th of July looking, but you can get the other ones for Christmas, Labor Day even. I'm happy with this. We'll see how long they last tonight, but overall, I like them. So this is the only one left that works. The rest of them crapped out about nine months ago. They only last about three months. There's the one that works. And all the rest of these, no go. I do kind of like them, but when they only last a few months, it's not worth it. Number 508 was a collection of beach gadgets I tested down on a trip to Huntington Beach. Let's first look back at how my original review went. First up, the Shark Tank towel. Some very hot sand. This is about a thousand degree sand. Let's try it. How's it look? Pretty, pretty sand free, I think. All right, I'm not seeing any sand whatsoever, none. So I think, I think it is superior. It did have less sand than the beach towel after I looked at it more closely. These are the beach can and bottle holders. I paid $14.44 for a multicolor seven pack. Some different size cans, some different size bottles. I've got no sand in any of them. They're all pretty uh, free of sand. My bottles have no sand in them, which is good. This is a Travelon antimicrobial towel. And what it does is it actually just provides a little towel with a clip. So you can just pull out of here, wipe your hands off, because I do have some sand and some sunscreen on my hand. And then you can just kind of shove it back in there, clip it on your bag when you're done. And then you can wash them when you get home later uh, for next time. All right, for the sunscreen, all you're supposed to do is pat to activate and then wipe the sand off. Here we go. All right, wait, it seems like it's working. Will this do the same thing? That is the question. Oh yeah, it's doing the same thing. Right, let's take a look at this bag cleaning ball. It's a new and easy way to keep your bags clean. The inner sticky ball collects dirt and crumbs. Just take apart, rinse, and reuse. Placing the ball in the bag. Placing the beach towels in the bag. We're gonna spend the day at the beach, put the towels back in there when I'm done. All right, so let's take a look here. Now, wow, every, every inch of that seems like it's covered. Let's squeeze it together, open it up, and see what we got. Wow, look at that. It is completely covered with sand. All that would have been in my bag and now it's collected there. Unfortunately, that's the last time I was at the beach. It was over a year ago, so I haven't really had a chance to use those again. But I have continued to use the sand cloud towel, not as a beach towel, but as a throw on my old couch that, whenever Bailey gets on there to keep some of the hair off. So I thought it was a fun collection to test out, but unfortunately, I haven't been back to the beach since then to try them again. Number 509 was a comparison of Timu versus Wish. Let's first flash back to my original review and see what happened there. 
First up, I ordered a couple of cheap generic baseball caps. Got the hat from Wish, which I'm wearing. It's not the most comfortable hat ever, but, but it is functional. As far as the comparison goes, Timu won the price, Timu won the shipping, and I would say they were a draw as far as the quality goes. Next up was a couple of different neck fans. Timu neck fan first. It doesn't stretch out when you put it on. It's not, it's pretty rigid. Let's try the Wish one next. The button over here is a little bit harder to find. This one's flexible, much better. You can flex it, you can adjust it. Price goes to Wish, shipping goes to Timu, quality is a tie. So so this one is a tie. Next up was an item I've actually reviewed for, which is an egg cracker. Timu egg separator. And oh, look at this. It looks like it's not coming out as easily as with the original. So as far as this one goes, I'd say the price goes to Wish, the shipping goes to Timu. Quality is a tie, so this one is also a tie. I did order a couple of men's shirts, although what I got really wasn't what I was expecting. Now, first of all, it's a little bit tight for medium. And honestly, it, it's not very comfortable. It kind of feels almost like a Halloween costume. And now this one feels a lot better. It feels the size seems seems more appropriate. So as far as the shirts go, the Timu wins across the board. The best price, the best shipping, the best quality. Next up, I ordered some shoes. I do like it as far as the, the appearance looks pretty good, but the soles have almost no cushion and they're flat as a pancake. As far as the Timu shoes go, they fit perfect. So the 11 was a good size for me. The soles are hard as a rock like the other one. In fact, it feels like the sole is not centered with the shoe. All right, once again, price and shipping was Timu, and quality was also a tie. Now, this is the only item that's not a direct comparison. I went on each, each site's deal page. Now, the band is not very comfortable. It, it was kind of a clunky to adjust it. It's kind of difficult to see the hands, even in the daytime or when it's dark out. It works about like a normal laser pointer. It seems perfectly fine. Now, as far as the quality goes, I'm gonna call it a tie, but I am a little bit more impressed by a $2 watch than a $2 laser pointer. Now, if we take a look at all six of these products, we had two ties. We had the neck fans and the egg crackers. Those, I would say, were a tie, and everything else went to Timu. If you take the shipping out of the equation, those two ties would move into the wish column, but Timu still wins four to two. So both these baseball hats I use on occasion, they're kind of small, but they're good for a backup when I can't find my normal hats. Now, this shirt I wear maybe once a month, only on a rare occasion. This one, on the other hand, it's too tight, it feels like a Halloween costume. It's got the same design on the front and the back. I'm not wearing this one. Number 510 was a Dippin' Dots maker. Now, was it possible to make homemade Dippin' Dots? I put it to the test and here's what happened. Now, the reviews are not very good for this one, but hopefully my experience can be better than average. So I'll fill it about halfway up. And we are, it's, our, it's leaking. It is already leaking, hold on a second. All right, after filling the dispensers, next up you're supposed to put one of these trays in the base. So there's a hole here in the base and there's a cup that you're supposed to fill with and that goes in the hole itself. Oh, it's filling, it's filling. Oh, and there it goes. All right, so this tray is done. Press the lever in, and you can see how it's filling up the mold. That's pretty cool. I like the way that looks. That is kind of oddly satisfying seeing them fill up like that. All right, I've got all six trays here. All right, it's been four hours. They say two to three, so they should be nice and frozen by now. Hmm, it doesn't sound like anything's breaking. I honestly don't have a very good feeling about this. That's what we got, but they haven't really come apart yet. Oh, I'm making a mess. I wouldn't say they're Dippin' Dots, but they're Dot-like. They're circular frozen treats. I guess in that respect, they're like dip, Dippin' Dots. I mean, it's pretty good. It's a nice frozen treat. It's not a Dippin' Dot, but it's a frozen treat. Real Dippin' Dots, fake Dippin' Dots. They are not the same thing. These are real Dippin' Dots. These are real, not Dippin' Dots. Totally different texture. It's not terrible, but it's not the same thing. The bad news? These ain't dipping dots. Now the day my review is over, I put this one away and we never saw it again for one reason. These ain't dipping dots. Well, that was a fun collection and I would say of all these, the ones I probably use the most are these cutting boards. I've had a lot of people over who have asked about these, complimented them, and then I tell them the price and they don't buy it. But that's all I've got. I'll be back in about another month with my next update. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.